Welcome on in, guys. Three bold takes, and we have another reaction for you today. Uh, Josh Pate um, actually came out with his SEC power rankings heading into 2024, and we're going to take a look at it and see if we agree or not agree. Um, and real quick here, his criteria was basically three things. Number one was your on-field performance over the past three years. Uh, number two was your level of recruiting and, and uh, transfer portal acquisitions the past couple of years. And number three is your facilities and I believe like your brand recognition draw all, the, all of those things combined. Um, so that's how he did it. What I'd like to do is start, you know, at the top. So one through four, um, Quinn, anything glaring here that you like disagree with or would change right off the bat? Well, yeah, you look at his one through four, number one's Georgia. That's really hard to disagree with. I mean, you have in the last three seasons, two national titles, uh, just dominating on the train on the uh, recruiting field. No issues with number one, no issues with number two with Alabama, two playoff appearances in the last three years, sheer domination as well. Then you get Texas at three and LSU at four to round it out. And honestly, I don't have any real disagreement at all with one, two, three, and four. I mean, they're all mega brands. They all have mega facilities. They Alabama and Georgia, I would argue LSU and Texas actually have better facilities than Alabama or Georgia. But Alabama and Georgia's on-field success is so dominant that you can't not have them as one and two. Uh, and then as far as Texas and LSU go, the brand recognition and the facility power and the recruiting power – of those programs has been so dominant over the last three years that you have to have them as your, as your three and four, there's no one else that really stacks up. Now, Texas, I would probably put LSU at three and Texas at four. I feel like the Texas thing is a recency bias issue with just last year being really good because they're still on the build up where I was, I would argue LSU is going to consistently, irregardless of coach consistently be a competitor and a force to be reckoned with Maybe not to win the title, but you can't just sleepwalk into an LSU game and expect to win, irregardless of who's coaching them. So I would put LSU at three and Texas at four, but that's more of a semantics thing. Oh, interesting you chose LSU to go up to three there. I got to agree one and two, solid. Uh, I'm going to stick with Texas at three just because the transfer portal and the coaching, what they have. I think they've done a really good job. I think the on-field performance from the last three years has had an uptick. I don't think they are on par with one and two. So I wouldn't mind putting them at four. But I'm going to toss you a, a little Yahtzee here, guys. I'm going to go Ole Miss at four. Um, the only thing I think they lack less than LSU is the facilities. And I'll give you that one. They definitely do. But they're outplaying people on the field. And Lane Kiffin is an absolutely mastermind at recruiting. And now you've seen this transfer portal heading into 2024. That I think he's done better than LSU. LSU typically already has a bunch of guys on roster that are – uh, supposed to be competing on the level of Alabama and Georgia. Ole Miss is not. And so Ole Miss outplaying, that's why I kind of got them there. But LSU does have them uh, beat out in facilities-wise. I would say brand recognition and but, and, yeah, yeah. and like facilities keep Ole Miss from ever being top, top four. Well, also, LSU has made an SEC championship appearance. Ole Miss has not. Um, so, and that's within the past three years. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, you know, personally, the top four, I have no issues with at all. Um, obviously Georgia one, Bama two, I think Texas coming in, will slide into that, that number three spot. Um, I like LSU at four. I'm okay with LSU at four. We'll just put it that way. Um, I, I have no issues with the top four. So then we move on to five through eight. Um, and then obviously you see on the screen, Oklahoma five, Ole Miss six, Tennessee seven, Texas A&M eight. And right off the bat here, um, I'm moving Ole Miss above Oklahoma. So I'm putting Ole Miss at five. Now, Oklahoma <clears throat> has had two 10 win seasons in the past three years. However, sandwiched in between them um, is that under 500 performance uh, in Brent Venable's first year. So you cannot look over that per se. Um, and also Oklahoma's schedule is a whole lot harder than anybody else's, uh, it sure seems like. But I'm going to give uh, Ole Miss the five spot and then uh, Oklahoma at six. Quinn, anything else on on that? Uh, 
you know, I, mine is a mine is a swap as well, but it's not that. I actually like Oklahoma at five, and a lot of it has to do with your uh, your brand recognition and your facilities. I think out of the out of this four, I think it's the right four in this pod. The two best facilities are Texas A and M and Oklahoma, and I like where both of them are at. I like Oklahoma at five. I like Texas A and M at eight because I think Texas A and M is vastly underperformed with their recruiting and with their facility advantage that they have on pretty much everyone. Like those two are on par with the other four teams in the top end, right? I would switch Tennessee and Ole Miss. Um, I would. I think a lot of that, uh, to me, it's Tennessee is a much bigger brand than Ole Miss ever will be. And they have much better facilities than Ole Miss does. So for Ole Miss to, and we're talking about two teams that haven't done anything but have a couple 10 wins, like have a 10 win season. I think what uh, Ole Miss has two and Tennessee has one. Uh, Ole Miss has a 10 and 11 win season. Tennessee okay. has yeah. zero 11 win seasons. I, I, that's the man. For me, it's 10 wins or more is a 10 win season, double digit win season. Yeah. Um, nobody has a bigger win I, out of the two of them. Ole Miss has those 10, 11 win seasons. They don't have the big marquee win that Tennessee has. Tennessee has their trump card in that with the with the home win over Alabama last year in Knoxville. So for me, with the brand recognition and the facilities, I'd bump Tennessee to my six. Again, it's a semantics thing. I do like that four, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do another switcheroo here, too. I'm going to be quick. I'm swapping Texas A&M and Auburn. I think Auburn overall is a better – SC. You laugh at me. I mean, honestly, look at the recruiting class Hugh Freeze brought in this year at Auburn. I think Hugh Freeze – and I kind of did this before we did the three-year thing, so I had Auburn before there. But looking at Texas A&M, they've had – and I'm going to also kind of reprimand them a little bit here. They've had great recruiting classes, but they've done it with money, and then all those guys left. So looking at Texas A&M, yeah, they kind of have – they don't really have the brand recognition, definitely with Texas and Oklahoma entering. That's why they left the Big 12 is because that they didn't want to play little brother, and here it is again. And Auburn, Auburn is always on top of recruiting, is one of the uh, nationally known SEC teams around the country, mainly because of the Iron Bowl. So I like Auburn at eight, and I'm going to move Texas A&M down to nine. And I know it's kind of getting into the next quadrant, but I like Auburn more and where they're headed recruiting-wise on the field. Uh, Texas A&M has a huge brand recognition across the country. I, I just, I just want to throw Absolutely. that out there. Um, so moving into nine through twelve, and and this is where it may get a little tough to kind of, I guess, judge these teams, right? Because you, you've got a lot of young teams in here: uh, Auburn, Missouri, South Carolina, and Kentucky. Now, I do want to give an asterisk here. Um, Josh did tweet something after Missouri announced that they were getting. $70 million, whatever it was, as, as a donation. So he was like, you know, I'm going to have to rethink that. But this is where he had it on the graphic. Um, yeah. Chase, let's go right back to you here, um, 9 through 12. I think I kind of like this list a little bit. Of course, I already uh, put Texas a and at 9, but I think 10 Missouri, it's a decent fit. The only one I'm changing, I'm moving South Carolina out. I'm moving Florida in. I think Florida is a nationally known brand everywhere. Everybody knows Florida. They're typically a good recruiting school. They've they've not done too well lately with the coaches they've had. So I'll give it there. But then the facilities is off the off the chart. You play in the swamp. I think Florida over South Carolina easily. And I kind of want to put Kentucky in at 11 and Florida at 12, but it's kind of how Quinn says it's semantics for me. I think Kentucky's been better on the field as of late than Florida, but Florida kind of has more of the facilities and the brand that Kentucky does. So it's kind of a almost an even playing field for me. Quinn? Yeah, so here I'm, I am I do it by pod sections. So my number nine, I'm going to give to Kentucky. Uh, they lack in facilities compared to the other four teams I have in this pod, but they beat all of them in consistent on-field success and turning that talent into a winning pro, a winning product. So I'm going to give Kentucky my number nine. My number 10, that's where I'm going to slot in. Uh, I'm going to slot in Missouri. I think they're in the up and up. My 11 is Auburn. I completely disagree with putting Auburn in the next tier up. 
you you're struggling to get positive seasons over the last handful of years at Auburn. As far as saying it's got a better facility than Texas a and that's not true. Uh, Texas a and facility wise is top three or four in the conference. Um, but I, for me, Auburn has been a kind of an underperforming product. Now that could change real quick. Uh, we've seen Auburn have high success. The problem for Auburn is with Alabama and Georgia being at the top of their game, it makes recruiting really hard for Auburn, especially if Florida State keeps coming on like they're coming on, they're kind of stuck in between those three programs. Uh, and then my number 12, I'm only putting them here because their facilities are huge and their brand recognition is huge. It's Florida. This is the most pathetic, underperforming program at this level in the whole country, period. Like it is, it's been a gross, ugly product that we've been getting out of Gainesville. And it's going to continue to be a gross and ugly product that we're getting out of Gainesville, but you can't drop into the bottom four because their, their facilities are just too good. And their recruiting is going to consistently be better than any of the teams in the bottom four. So Florida is my, Florida is my number 12. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I've got Missouri nine, um, Auburn 10, Florida 11, South Carolina 12, um, bumping Kentucky down to 13. And then we'll just kind of get there. We've only got a couple minutes left here. Uh, bottom tier, obviously, Vandy, no issues with Vandy. Uh, Mississippi State, no issues with Mississippi State. Um, and then Arkansas, and then I personally um, have Kentucky, I believe, at 13. So, um, Quinn, real quick here, last last little bit, Any any issues here? Yeah, for my four, obviously, I bumped South Carolina down into this section, but the top team of this section for me is Arkansas. I think they got much better facilities than anyone else in the section. Uh, South Carolina would be my next team up, then Mississippi State, and obviously Vanderbilt. I mean, Vanderbilt, like a community college compared to the rest of the teams in the conference, they will consistently be number 14. They don't put in any kind of – they were con- doing construction on their football stadium during football season as an SEC team. What is that? Who d- – what – and so Vander, Vanderbilt's easily 14th. I don't think Vanderbilt cares that they're 14th. Uh, and then, like I said, Mississippi State at 13, or, or sorry, 16, sorry, 16, Mississippi State 15, uh, South Carolina, and then Arkansas is my top team in this four team section. Yeah, I was really happy Quinn put Florida at 12 because I swore that somehow he's going to find a way to put him at 16. Glad he did not, but it's the same thing for me. Arkansas is at 13, and then South Carolina. I don't really know how you look at any of the three that we've talked about and say South Carolina is at 11, so that's kind of a head-scratcher for me. Uh, for Josh, is their on-field performance has been terrible. Their recruiting has been the decent but not great, and then their facilities are average. So I don't know how you put them in that tier above Florida and Arkansas. So I got the same as Quinn. Interesting, yeah. A um, lot of a uh, lot of talk around the the power rankings as always. Um, so guys, I appreciate you watching. This has been a reaction to uh, Josh Pate's uh, SEC power rankings. Uh, Like, comment, subscribe for more videos every single Monday and Wednesday of the week. I appreciate you guys watching. Have a good one. Peace out.